On June 24th, 1978, Star Wars had finally hit theaters in Japan, and as you would imagine, became a massive success. The very impact Star Wars had on Japan led to two things, a rise in the popularity of sci-fi stories, as well as an unfortunate lack of interest towards Japan's own productions for some time. As the aforementioned film had incorporated a lot of their common filmmaking techniques utilized in tokusatsu, but to such mastery that hadn't been seen at the time. This is partly the reason why in the very late 70s and very early 80s, tokusatsu struggled to find an audience until Metal Heroes. But regarding that first thing, Star Wars helped give way for many beloved sci-fi classics from Japan in Tetsuno or not, such as Space Sheriff Gavan, Legend of the Galactic Heroes, as well as the Mobile Suit Gundam series, which also led to the Subarai and Sunrise co-created anime, The Ultraman. Oh, and Gamera Super Monster. In response to the popularity of Star Wars, as well as the waning interest in tokusatsu, Toho wanted to make a film that was a lot more low-key in its special effects making it a stark contrast in her last attempt at responding to the popularity of Star Wars being Jun Fukuda's War in Space. Playwright and screenwriter So Kuramoto would be in charge of the story. Kuramoto wrote a script titled UFO Blue Christmas, which would be published in Kinema Junpo before getting the attention of producer Tamuki Tanaka, who would then pick it up and decide that Kihachi Okamoto, one of Japan's finest filmmakers to exist, would be the director. Ironically, despite utilizing tokusatsu techniques in quite a good amount of his work, and even making a tokusatsu film being 1971's Battle of Okinawa, featuring special effects work by Teriyoshi Nakano, Okamoto was not a fan of tokusatsu entertainment, even the likes of Godzilla and Ultraman. Okamoto felt that stuff like that was essentially style over substance, he even went as far as to express distaste for films like Star Wars. Now, there's definitely an argument to be made here, but looking at Okamoto's filmography, a lot of his films are either based on real events or just set in our reality, as they all have something to say about what Japan has gone through, the state of the nation at the time, or back then and how we can be better by not repeating the past, or just owning up to the things we've done. It's also possible that his time as an assistant director on Ishida Honda's Half Human may have left a bitter taste in his mouth, even when considering that it can be interpreted as offensive to Burakumen, which consists of lower-class citizens in Japan. Something that clashes with the kind of filmmaker Okamoto is, and it's likely that his disinterest could be just that he didn't care for these films. At least, not a lot, considering he's worked with big names in Toku like Tomyuki Tanaka, Ishida Honda, and Teriyoshi Nakano, as well as Hideo Amamoto. So he probably has some respect, at the very least. But despite not being a big sci-fi fan, Okamoto not only had a fascination with UFOs, but he was very impressed by Kuramoto's screenplay, which he found to be a very compelling story that addresses xenophobia and social prejudice. However, Okamoto was intimidated by the length and the scope of the script, as in the 70s, it wasn't common for a Japanese film to surpass two hours, unless it's a TV production or if you happen to be Akira Kurosawa. In fact, Okamoto even suggested that this film should be a TV movie, but Kuramoto insisted that he adapt it as faithful as possible and with its nature led to it being a standard film production. This film would become the 1978 socio-political sci-fi thriller Blood Type Blue, otherwise known as Blue Christmas or The Blue Stigma. Now, I know what you're thinking. Didn't I review this movie already? Why, yeah, I did. In fact, when I watched this movie for the first time, I hated it. It's a movie I wanted to love, but couldn't. I did not like the editing, I didn't like the pacing, I couldn't invest myself in the characters, and I wasn't a fan of how on the nose it was with its message. Since then, I've not only started to look at media differently over the years, I've also taken the time to look more into the films of Kihachi Okamoto, and honestly, I think it's time I give Blood Type Blue a more fair and educated assessment. The film opens with reports of a strange phenomena where an orange light that's emitted from a UFO causes the blood of those who come in contact with it to change color, specifically the color blue. What follows is a series of events that consists of boardroom meetings, news reports, and investigations surrounding this anomaly, only for societal tensions to rise around the world, which ultimately leads to extreme prejudice against the Blue Bloods as more of them appear over time. When I last talked about Blood Type Blue, I knew deep down that a good film was in there somewhere, but it was underneath what felt like a misguided structural mess of a film, or so I thought at the time. And now, upon revisiting it, I actually think it's a very good film. The story follows several key players, as we experience the aforementioned phenomena with them. 
There's Hiroshi Katsuno as Oki Tasuke of National Defense, Keiko Takeshita, who you may recognize as a voice actress for several Ghibli films, as a kind-hearted barbershop clerk named Seiko, Tatsuya Nakadai, who's an extremely goaded actor, by the way, as the dedicated national broadcasting agent Minami, and we mainly see the events of this film unfold through their perspectives as they provide more insight into all the hatred that's consuming the world around them, raising plenty of questions as to what really defines us as human, what it means to have a soul, and how we can all live in harmony. It's also in the title itself, Blue Christmas. Christmas being essentially a celebration of life, as we spend time with our loved ones and reminisce about what gives us meaning. And adding the word blue, a color commonly associated with sadness, gives it more layers and sets the tone for the kind of experience this film is. Other actors in this film also include Eiji Okada from The Axe from Outer Space and Lady Snowblood, Kunie Tanaka from the Battles Without Honor and Humanity series, Karuyachi Suga from Hiroshi Inagaki's Samurai Trilogy and the Human Vapor, Shin Kishida from Return of Ultraman and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, and Hideo Amamoto from countless TV shows and movies like Kamen Rider and the Red Spectacles. I said in my last review that I felt these characters were underdeveloped, but I realized that they're really not meant to undergo a very complex arc. As mentioned before, we're simply taking in whatever the film throws at our characters, seeing how they adapt to them. It's a lot like Shin Godzilla in that sense, in how we are spectators along with the characters, which overall makes for an immersive story. And something like that is very important for the kind of film Blood Type Blue aspires to be, especially at such a topical moment in time where there was plenty of denial and discrimination. Taking notice of these social issues and seeing how we can either handle or come to terms with them, Blood Type Blue is very subtle in some cases in that regard, but is also very explicit in others. The final moments are straight up an allusion to the Night of Broken Glass, and is what the entire film has been building up towards, and it's really shocking to see, honestly. All of this is accompanied by the editing and pacing of the film. As much as I complained about it in the past, it's truly that signature Kihachi Okamoto style that really makes it for me. It's fast-paced, throws a lot at you, solely because the movie is challenging you, it's bringing these instances of hatred to your attention, and it's deliberately wanting you to process it and move along with the story. Otherwise, you're just going to get lost and confused, just like our characters who try to make something of the situations at hand. Then there's the music by Masaru Sato. There's a perfect balance of it being beautiful, somber, calm, suspenseful, and intense at the right moments. I say it's easily one of his best scores. There's also the song Blue Christmas by the fictional in-universe totally not the Beatles boy band, the Humanoids, who just so happen to be more popular than the Beatles. And honestly, I believe it. Don't at me. And they're just fun to watch. Usual case of not that Great Caucasian acting in a Japanese film aside. They think they can keep spacemen out? That, that, they're screwed. All we want is peace and music and just a little dope. Hey. Uh, yeah. I want to invite all of you to our UFO. Yeah. Come on! Hey. Oh, come on I think I'd like to do three things, you know. Um, go to the Latin Quarter, <laughs> eat Sapporo Miso Ramen, <laughs> and go to Wayno Zoo and see the pandas. <laughs> I also wouldn't be surprised if it was somewhat inspired by the Elvis Presley song, Blue Christmas, a song which expresses the longing for the company of someone, much like how we should all stick together in our times of trying, or we only succumb deeper into our loneliness and isolation. At the time of its release, Blood Type Blue was unfortunately a box office bomb that received negative reviews from critics and audiences, during a time where Star Wars-inspired features dominated the market, which probably contributed to Okamoto having a dislike for Star Wars, considering how much Blood Type Blue meant to him, especially with its commentary. But as time passed, the movie has gained a cult following, with an appreciation for the handling of its subject matter and stylish direction. Some even claim Blood Type Blue as a masterpiece, especially filmmaker Hideaki Anno, who cites it as one of his favorite films and would even reference it in Neon Genesis Evangelion plenty of times. 
Whether it's simply name dropped or mimicking the film's fluorescent dreamlike visual style from several scenes in End of Evangelion, which also has a scene that shot for shot a remake of a moment from Okamoto's Battle of Okinawa, which Anno considers as his all time favorite film, the dude owes himself to Okamoto so much that Shin Godzilla's editing and cinematography is taken straight out of Japan's longest day, and has a picture of him as a plot point in the movie. With all that said, I love this film. It's definitely grown on me tremendously over the years, and I'm glad I revisited it with a more trained mind, if you will. Would it have been different if I hadn't exposed myself to more of Okamoto's works? Can't say for sure, but regardless, context should always matter when it comes to discussing films in general. It's like how you can't talk about the original Godzilla without mentioning the fear of the ever-growing power of military science, or Evangelion with how media was taking on a more existential approach at the time. Blood Type Blue, as with other films by Kihachi Okamoto, definitely deserves to be up there, and it makes for a very fine addition to an already masterful filmography. But what do you guys think? Have you seen Blood Type Blue? Drop a comment below and I want to give a very special shout out to my channel members and my supporters on Patreon, so if you like what you see, then consider supporting the channel with a link in the description, where for at least a single dollar you can get access to my Discord server and you can also unlock other perks like early access to videos and exclusive content. And shout out to Valerie for joining the Patreon. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and this is Titan Goji, signing off.